Right now, I am actively releasing fascial adhesions in my body to restore flow, to improve mobility, to reduce pain, to release tension that's trapped in my body, which will all translate to how I feel. And I wanna show you how to do the same. If you've watched any of my videos, then you've probably seen me teach or you may have even experienced this form of fascia decompression. And I want to explain a little bit more as to why these adhesions build up. What is our fascia? How can we actually effectively release this in more detail so that you can truly start improving the health of your fascia, how you function and how you feel? One of the main roles of fascia decompression is to release the adhesions stored within the fascia. And this can lead to immobility, a lack of proper movement, pain, whether that's in a localized area or even a completely different area of the body, similar with tension in the body. This can lead to asymmetries and muscle imbalances. You can tell obviously that fascial adhesions can play a pretty critical role in our overall health and well-being. And before we jump into showing you exactly how to release these adhesions, we need to understand the main role of what fascia actually is. Fascia is this three-dimensional matrix. It's this web that holds our entire body together from a muscle cell to bundles of muscle fibers to singular muscle cells and muscle fibers to literally muscles to bone to all of our system structures and our cells. Literally, if we didn't have fascia in our body, we would just be bones and cells just goobed all over the floor. It is a large component of our connective tissue but also extremely important and crucial for movement in all different planes, multi-directional, and we need to make sure that we can keep our fascia healthy and fluid. Now, our fascia is composed of three primary components, one being collagen, which is that sturdy tensile structure, and it slides and glides. It doesn't just necessarily contract and stretch like a muscle. But then we also have our elastin, which is more of this elastic recoil. So it can have more of that spring mechanism to it, which is also very important, especially if you do certain training protocols. But then there's the ground substance, and this is more of that gel-like fluid. And one of the main roles that it does is it keeps these fibers of our fascia fluid so that it can glide properly. And that is so critically important to understand because this can lead to fascial adhesions if we don't have that proper slide and glide of our fascia. Our fascia can become dry and sticky, which can be one of the main causes to fascial adhesions. But what causes the fascia to become dry and sticky and lead to these fascial adhesions in the first place. One of them can be from living a sedentary lifestyle or just a lack of movement. When we aren't moving or moving in a multi-directional way, then our fascia isn't actually able to glide effectively. We need the fascia to glide to stay hydrated, to stay fluid. But if we're stuck in a posture all day and we're not really moving, the ground substance becomes a little bit more viscous, a little bit more dry and sticky and this can lead to adhesions. But now for the inverse of this, we could be overtraining which can lead to inflammation. And that inflammation can lead to dehydration. But you can also be training in a very repetitive way, and which is something that our body isn't necessarily used to doing. So if I am, for example, a baseball pitcher throwing in the same direction for hours a day, then our fascia and our body is going to respond to that. And it's gonna to respond to the stress that we put on it. So it can actually create more fascia with something called fibroblast cells, which is casting these webs of collagen to build it in the way 
way and the demand that we kind of subconsciously and consciously put on the body. Now, if you are a bodybuilder and I went through my healthy phase of doing that, we're doing a lot of redundant, repetitive, linear movements. And this can just add up to more compression. But what is this compression? When we are adding more force in a linear way repeatedly, then we are starting to literally add compression, which is limiting the amount of glide that we have in our fascia. We are limiting the fluidity in our fascia. And this just leads to more dense muscle, dense fascia, and this can also lead to adhesions that develop in the body. We've all experienced injury to some extent as well, whether that is banging your elbow on a desk or fracturing a bone, whatever it is, this can lead to fascial adhesions as well. Our body needs to repair the damage that we've done and collagen, elastin, our fascia is a major component to rebuilding the injury that has occurred. And because it's not gonna just go back to its perfect state necessarily, these adhesions will build up in a way to protect us and to rebuild these structures. Now, these are just some of the main reasons why these adhesions build up, but I hope you have a better understanding because as soon as you have a better understanding of why these adhesions build up, we can become a little bit more conscious of what we can do to make a change, but we're also going to understand what we're doing when I show you how to release these adhesions in our fascia. Now we're going to dive into the technique of how to release these fascial adhesions. And this is using the block therapy method. So you can of course use your block from block therapy, or you can even use a tightly rolled up towel. People have actually gotten some pretty incredible results just using this, but these are gonna be the two tools that I'm gonna be talking about. Now, if you have something that is like our block, this is dense. This is going to reach the deeper adhesions with in the fascia, it's also gonna be getting into those areas of our body that the towel just can't necessarily reach. And we use this literally head to toe, but we're just gonna be talking about one position. You're gonna absolutely get get a benefit from just using a rolled up towel in this one position that I'm showing. I'm gonna be explaining a lot of this and how we're doing this as we're in it together so you can just feel, sense it, and understand and apply. So let's grab the rolled up towel or your block and we're gonna be placing this directly over top of the belly button. This is going to release adhesions within the belly. There's so much that goes on in the belly and we need to make sure that this is spacious and open and fluid. Nice and slow, you're gonna bring your belly button directly over top of the block or the rolled up towel. And the very first thing and the first principle here is we want to be relaxed. That is so incredibly important. Our fascia tends to react and protect us. So if we are sensing some pain or discomfort, then our fascia is just simply going to say, I don't like this, this isn't what I should be doing. And it's not gonna actually surrender, relax and let go. We need to persuade this tissue to release these adhesions to melt so they can become more fluid. So how do we do that? We need to do this by connecting to the proper breath to bring us into more of a parasympathetic state. Let's start by breathing in and out through the nose and try to exhale longer than you inhale. So for example, exhale of six counts, inhale of four counts, exhale of six counts, and inhale of four counts. Now we wanna be breathing through the diaphragm. I want you to feel your belly expanding into the block and your rib cage expanding as you inhale and then everything's getting a little bit smaller as you exhale. Now as you're settling in, you're probably sensing a little bit of pain or a little bit of tension, and that's okay. At any point, if you feel that you need to hold your breath or it's too intense, ease off, reconnect at a less intensity, connect back to the breath. If you're holding your breath, you're not gonna be getting the benefit. We need to stay in that relaxed state. Next, 
we want to stay here isometrically or move very slowly. You can only imagine if I'm doing this, my fascia is just gonna be like, okay, we're, we kind of lost the point here. I'm going back into more protective mode. We wanna stay here and move very, very slow. Maintain that breath, stay in this chill state because we are persuading the tissue to melt. Melting is a great kind of visualization that you can use to just feel that we are allowing that fluidity to come back in the fascia. Next, we need to be spending a minimum of three minutes here. I like to say three to five minutes, depending on how dense this area is and what adhesions we're dealing with. And I would say, as I mentioned, three minutes as a minimum is a really, really good rule of thumb. Now, once you've spent that three to five minutes here, you might have felt something let go. You might feel a little different or lighter. Then you can nice and slow exhale up and off. Now, you can theoretically do this pretty well anywhere in your body, but you are the one in control. You are the practitioner here. And that's what's really cool. You're able to do this on your own and not necessarily rely on others. Now, I'm not saying not to rely on others. There's absolutely a time and a place and there's some incredible professionals out there, but it is awesome and empowering for you to be able to do this on your own and to feel those releases, release some tension, improve your mobility. And now that you have a better understanding and idea of what fascia decompression feels like, just take a few breaths. You might just feel a little bit better. Um, you might feel a little taller. Your breath might feel easier. So you can work in other positions. And if you're following any of my videos, now you know how to do this in a little bit more detail to make it that much more effective. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.